Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back. Um, today, I wanted to look at uh, visualizing different clustering algorithms. Um, so we'll get into like, what does that mean in a second? But uh, the background here is we've been working on this like QR code decoder, right? And we've got to the point where looking at a perfectly aligned 2D image, we get something that's like pretty reasonable, right? Like we can like find all the dots and we can decode the world's simplest QR code and it's like working okay, right? Um, and so the direction I kind of wanted to go next was I wanted to try looking at like real world images where you would hold up your, your phone camera in a bar to get like their menu because they won't give you a real menu anymore. You have to like fucking take it your phone and look at it. And there's a lot of like things that can go wrong there, right? Like this thing isn't gonna be perfectly aligned. Um, there's gonna be like sensor noise. Um, maybe there's like a shadow cast over part of the QR code and now all of a sudden like you don't have this perfect like white and black thing you have like your blacks are going to be like a little washed out your whites might change color. Um, and so all of those things kind of put me in the headspace of we're going to need to need to be doing like some form of signal processing right. Um, and the things that I'm like specifically worried about right now are two things one is the way that we like detect this QR code in like the larger image right now um, is we like kind of like do these like 1D scan lines where we look for these sequences of one black, one white, three black, one white, one black, right? So boom, 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 boom. Um, and here this is visualized by these like red and blue dots. So one of these is like vertical candidates, one of them is horizontal. And at the end we like get like some candidates in the center where we've like found that pattern enough times and we like build up a cluster of these like four points that we have here, which is just like where they're intersecting kind of close. Um, and then we like build the finders out of those. So what I'm concerned about with that is uh, that algorithm is like so fucking brain dead stupid that I think that there's like a good chance that it triggers on something that's not this, right? Uh, and so if, if there's like false positives kind of kicking around, I want some way to like group these things into category, like into like groups so that I can find, well, there are three good candidates here with a bunch of points in them and then oh over here there's like some like useless points and i don't care about those ones those are noise let's filter those out uh the other thing i'm worried about is uh contrast enhancement so I, you can imagine a world where your your camera is picking up the qr code fine um but your blacks in what we're working with right now we're, our blacks are value zero and our whites are value 255 right in the range of like zero to in like a one byte value right um, and you might get something that's like a little bit less than that, right? Your, all of your blacks might be, you know, they might be in the range like 10 to 25 and your whites might be in the range like, you know, 100 to 150 because like, who knows, like maybe it's like a little dark out or something. Um, and maybe there's like a shadow cast across your QR code, right? So you can kind of imagine like you've got a QR code and like maybe you've got like, you know, a shadow cast over here. And then what the fuck do you do, right? Now you can, maybe you, you don't have like a super clean white and black anymore. What's next? Um, and so what I'm kind of imagining is that, like, if you were to have global, let, let's imagine just for, like, uh, for the sake of this exercise, that all the white pixel or all the white modules in the QR code are brighter than all of the black modules. What you might end up happening is you might end up with, like, a histogram where you have, like, in the v range of 0 to 255, um, say like your image was like all white, you have a hits histogram that looks like this, right? Every single pixel, uh, where this is the Y axis here is like number of pixels and the X val X axis is, um, color essentially. Um, you're going to have like all white pixels, but we can imagine a world where that's like not the case. We don't even have to imagine. They're not all going to be white. What's going to end up happening is we should end up with a histogram in like a perfect world that looks something like this, right? Where it goes like do, 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 where it's like everything's either perfectly black or perfectly white and everything else is like really minimal. Um, but I'm imagining that we might end up in a situation where you have like, you know, a couple black chunks and like a couple white chunks, like something like this, right? Just right like if in the shadow region maybe it's like this one and this one and in like the unshadowed region maybe it's this one and this one so these would these are darks and lights and so what i want to be able to do is i want to find a big a center point where i can say everything above this value is white and everything below that value is black so i want to do some form of like peak detection um shit there was another thing in there i just remembered it and i wrote note noted it down in my head and then i forgot it uh there's another reason that this applies i can't remember what it is um, anyways, 
both all of the like both of these concepts and whatever th third one that I can't remember um they're they they're kind of like taking data and figuring out like trying to like clump it right so in here we're trying to clump the darks clump the lights here we're trying to clump the finer regions and so I don't have like a good intuition on these like on how to do that and so I've been like googling clustering algorithms and now I'm kind of like well let's try a few visualize them see what fucking happens and hopefully through that process we can build an intuition on um which algorithms like work for us and more importantly if we wanted to adapt an algorithm to work for our case better now we will have like the tools in our toolbox to do that um yeah so that's that's what I'm thinking um I'm thinking uh, I want to implement the clustering algorithms in Zig because that's what our QR code scanner is written in, and it's like what I'm, what where they'll eventually be used. Um, Zig doesn't have like a great GUI toolkit, as far as I can tell. Like there, are, I found some, but I'm I don't really want to like invest my time in learning a Zig GUI toolkit. I think like the browser is it like uh, how do I say this? I've been into this idea of. Um, dependencies that you can take on that will work anywhere right so to make this this visualization here all we did was we banged out a little svg renderer you can do that in any fucking language that has io very easily and now you can like look at this thing and it's like a very powerful visualization for very little effort um and i kind of think that the idea of using a web server in your language and leveraging a browser that everybody has installed uh to do simple like one-off guis is like very powerful because any, any sane language um should have a tcp server it's not hard to go from tcp server to http server um and from there it shouldn't be hard to like spit out some data over json and visualize it with html and javascript and then that tool set is available to you everywhere you're working in c you're working in rust you're working in zig you're working in go like anything that'll that'll work um so that's what i'm thinking that's what i'm thinking so plan of action is to set up a zig server that initializes some grid of 2d points um, to give us like some like data to work with then we want to like visualize those points in some way in a browser with like an html canvas probably um and then we can like try to like start working with like some clustering algorithm that will like maybe you click the next button on this thing it will like do some steps of the iteration and you can like watch how the clustering occurs as we move that's the plan that's the plan so long intro but i think that it is useful context Maybe not useful, but it is context. <laughs> uh, okay. So, let's see. Let's do a little bit of a uh, zig init exe. Get ourselves a little main.zig up and running. Zig build. Let's get it. Our version 0, 0.0 building and running. So, and zig out. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, cool. So, we have something that builds and runs. Uh... That's going to be annoying. We have a bunch of like artifacts in here. So let's make a little git ignore. And throw in a uh, zig out and zig cache. And let's see, is that, that seems to get everything. Um, and let's like bang out a little HTTP server. So I think that it has one built in. Um, so we can say like server is equal to std http server yeah uh and this guy how do we use him how do we use him oh the server is this whole file we have a connection we have a request we have a response what else is in here surely there's like some way to like just start up server here we go start the http server listening on the given address listen okay is there like an init function yeah here we go pub function init so we pass in an allocator and some options then we say hey could you listen on address localhost port 1234 and then this accept is probably analogous to your like tcp except where you say like we are going to wait for some sort of new connection that connection is going to return us a response uh oh wait response not a request why is it giving us a response Oh, probably because this is like an object that we're going to start populating. So probably, yeah, yeah, pub function do, send the response headers. Does it send the response body in here? Just the headers. Wait, reader, read, write. Write bytes to the server. 
So probably the workflow is something like uh, you get one of these response objects every time somebody connects, um, and then you send them back something. You like populate your headers by probably writing your headers into this field here. Yeah. And then you say, hey, send over those headers, and now I'll send the body after. Probably. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, okay, so var, 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 server <laughs> is equal to a server. Uh, we initialize this with an allocator um, and some server options. And right now I'm just going to say, I don't really give a fuck about the options. We're going to create an allocator. So uh, GPA for general purpose allocator is std heap general purpose allocator. We don't have any options that we care about and we want to instantiate it normally. I think it's something like this. And then we say our allocator is equal to gpa.allocator. And we want to make sure that when we're done, uh, we check for any leaks or stuff like that. So at the end of the block, we'll go, please deinitialize. Okay. So we think that we're going to listen on some address that takes in a net address. So uh, server listen. And I jumped definition on this. Sick. Net address. So this can be constructed out of parse IP, given an IP and a port, resolve IP, parse IP6, parse init IP4. This is probably what we want. Yeah, init IP4. Init IP4. So uh, address addy is going to be uh, uh, I we'll call this net adder is equal to std net address. There we go. Just a little name alias that it's a little more easy to work with down here. More easier, as they say. Init IP4. So let's just say we'll listen on everything. Uh, and we'll listen on port like 9999 or something. I don't really give a shit. Uh, he doesn't like this because this isn't how you initialize array in this language. I'm so used to whatever languages use these square brackets. So this is like we want like a slice of uh, four u8s. Maybe we let it infer the size. Uh, something like that. And then we can listen on the addy. Okay. And so I think that this doesn't actually do anything. This just starts listening. We have a try here. Is this try as well? This is not try. Is this try? That's not try. Okay. And once we've started listening, we can just like in a loop try to accept a connection. Uh huh. And we don't really give a shit about the options right now. This is probably failable. Yep. Uh, and then we say response is equal to this. And we want to fill in the response headers. So. Uh, let's just go to, like, some website <laughs> and uh, look at their <laughs> response headers for uh, HTML file. If I were just, like, how do, where's, like, root? GitHub.com. How do I just get, like, I just want, like, the first thing. Is this sort of sorted by which one came first? GitHub.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I want raw. This is the data. I want, like, the headers. Headers. Here we go. Uh, response headers. Most of this stuff doesn't matter, but I'm looking for a content type. Here we go. Content type. I think that's the only one that, like, really matters. Okay. So, response headers. Pend. Uh huh. And we are going to append con content type. And I'm going to say we are, oopsies, returning some HTML. I don't really care about car set, I don't think. Uh, actually, I'm looking at this stuff, and surely we have to like free some stuff. So, server, when we initialize this stuff with an alloc. We must have to server dot d in it at the end of scope, and here we must have to free the response. I should read documentation, but instead, what if I just guess? You know, 
that's surely a better way to do this. <laughs> no, with this like memory stuff, it's like error case handling is like really important. So I guess he doesn't actually fucking say though. So we we do just have to assume based off the API, unless I'm like missing something where the docs are listed something else. Um. Okay. Server dot listen. Maybe accept. Will accept tell us that we have to free our thing. Accept a new connection. Cool. Response. Yeah, he doesn't actually say anything. So I guess we do just have to fucking guess. And that's okay. I like guessing. I prefer to guess. Um, this probably could fail. Yeah, this could fail. Okay, and so then we're kind of saying, like, okay, let's send the headers. And then let's send something in the body. Hello, world. And maybe that's it. Uh, that's it. And I think that you also have this, like, a uh, close connection on finish thing that you can ask with the browser. HTTP close connection. So that they don't try to reuse because we're not going to... Here we go. Connection close. I think. Because that way, like, if we don't support reusing our connections because if we were to reuse them then we would have to like stash this stuff in like some event loop and then like keep track of like which client is connected to which socket and then like read all of the tcp sockets with epoll and then like i just don't want to do that i don't, I don't fuck it <laughs> go away you know uh okay so let's zig build and run this thing he doesn't compile because here I wrote squiggle brackets, which is void, but I wanted dot squiggle brackets, which is fill in everything by automatically, please. That wasn't English, but you know what I mean. You know what I meant, maybe. Um, missing field allocator. Uh, okay, so here we pass in I'll look probably like this, except takes in uh, no. Oh, options just needs the allocator maybe defined here. Maybe. Error is ignored on this. Okay. And error is ignored here. You know what? Why are you such a whiny asshole, Zig? Like, I know that that's why I like you, but it's annoying. Um, okay. Cool. Um, yeah, okay. I think that's all fine. So, let's look at now, if we go to localhost 9999... Nothing happens. Oh, because we abort it. Panic reached unreachable code at response due. So clearly I just didn't use this right. Um, at 397 in server. So here we depend on our state. So we can only do we can only do a do if our state is weighted. Ah, so wait for the client to send the complete request head. So before we do, we have to wait. Okay. Okay. Sure. Did you crash this time? Sure. Address in use. Oh. That's so annoying. Um... How do I... Because Probably because we crashed. We didn't, like, close the connection. We didn't, like, close our TCP socket. So probably if I, like, net stat list... Uh, net stat dash L and then grep 9999. No, he's good. So why is he complaining? Oh, he, was, he probably had time to clean himself up. So now he crashed again. And I probably if I do the same thing. No, net stat dash L dash T. Nothing? Yeah, so why... I don't know why it broke then. Unless this is something. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, C TCP address in use after crash. Surely somebody knows what I'm talking about. Linux. Uh, I've run into the same issue. It's because you're closing. It's because you're closing your connection to the socket, but not the socket itself. The socket can enter a time wait state to ensure all data has been transmitted. TCP guarantees delivery impossible. Or really detailed blah, blah, blah. But it's not a bug. See, comment, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we can just ask it to reuse addresses. Cool. Um, which probably means that in our server, 
initializer. Um, probably these options. Nice. <laughs> nice. They've thought of everything. Uh, oops, I just deleted something in fucking standard library. So here it's under options. I just type, type reuse address, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just here, reuse address equals true. Or reuse port. Which one was on set? I guess that's probably fine. Okay. Does that fix it? Okay, we still crash, but now we can write run twice, which is cool. Uh, not writable is surprising here. So maybe I have to do that after... Hmm, no, I don't know. Let's looky. Mm, oh, so this probably tries to write into something that we have to allocate. Not writable. So here, transfer encoding. Oh, transfer encoding. Transfer encoding. Chunked content length, none. I wonder if there's like a better zig standard library. Like, is there an example in here? Oh, there must be a test. There must be a test. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's look for test. There we go. So here we are close. He does have to res reset at the end. He, what does that do? He waits on this guy, so we figured that out. We do need to set the transfer coding. Who sets it? Um. If ha if it doesn't have a transfer encoding. We write, wait, if has transfer coding, has transfer content length. When we execute our do, we, if it doesn't have a transfer coding, doesn't have a content length, we add them. Oh, I see. So we need to set our transfer coding here. Transfer encoding HTML. Which one of these is easier? Um, hop by hop, blah, 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 blah. So we have chunked data as a series of chunks. The content length header is omitted in this case. At the beginning of each chunk, you need to add the length of the current chunk in hexadecimal. Uh, chunked seems probably easier because I probably don't have to pre-compute. I wonder if it just like handles it for me. So if I just say like response transfer encoding is equal to chunked. Does that just solve my problem? Oh, there we go. Sick. Got a little hello world there. And if I control C, I think that probably we're just not cleaning up. Uh, clean up. I'm kind of concerned that uh, when I control C, it's just like hard killing the application, which isn't ideal. Is not ideal. Yeah, that's not printed. But if I were to just uh, return true or return after my first request, refresh this, oops, refresh, then I get that cleanup log. So I would like to wait for that. So. I think if I remember correctly, you can um, pull Linux pull signal. <laughs> Correctly processing signal file descriptor. I, yeah, you could create a signal file descriptor and then pull for the signal or for pull. But I think there's like an interruptible, interruptible whole Linux where you can say like hey could you like just fucking wait for like somebody to talk to me or uh like just give the fuck up 
if I if I get a SIGINT or something. C also. Select. No. No, these aren't... These aren't ringing... Oh, maybe it's this. P select. That sounds familiar. Uh, until signal is caught. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then there, I think there's also P poll. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Oh, and I was actually here the entire time. I just didn't see it. So, right, okay. So we can say, hey, I want to wait for there to be some activity on this socket. Unless there's a signal. Then if I catch a signal, then I'll, like, fucking do something with it. Um, so, let's see. Is there, like, do I have access to, like, the underlying TCP socket in here? If I do, that'll make this, like, really easy. Uh, socket is a net stream server who has a socket file descriptor. And then I assume that in, like, their re-implementation of libc, they probably have people as well. I just, I'd assume. But I guess, like, maybe if it's, like, a niche thing, they might not. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, Linux here, uh, maybe it's in here, poll, uh, function, poll, yeah, okay, function, people, yeah, nice, okay, 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 this is, pr this is the way I've done it before, um, the other option is that I could pull two sockets, one being the server that I'm, like, the, the TCP server, and one being a, like, signal file descriptor, but I think that signal FD thing is harder to use than just, like, attaching signal handlers, so. Let's do that. Let's do that. This is, like, really not worth the time, by the way. But the, like, neuroticism in my head makes me want to say, no, the, the allocator has to deal it. Because, like, it would be nice uh, if I don't, like, properly exit the application. Then, like, the global allocator won't tell me that I forgot to free stuff. And it's, like, I would like to free stuff, even though, like, who fucking cares? Like, it would just be nice to know that I'm not, like, fucking up. So, that's why we're doing this. And then, if I remember correctly, there's also, like, a... Uh, Sig action or something. Man, signal. Um, see also this stuff. I was hearing people. It <laughs> gross. <laughs> is it? Why? Where is like? There's some fucking man page that just tells me. Uh, exactly how to catch stuff. Uh, maybe it is man to sig action. Like there's somewhere there's an example that I can copy paste. Here we go. This is the one. Um. So here they can say, "Hey, I want some sort of signal handler," and when I catch sig seg fault, <laughs> instead of crashing, I'll try to keep going. That's crazy. Uh. But here, okay, so we define a handler, and then we use sig action to mask off our, our signal with our handler. Okay. So in here, probably they have sig action in here as well. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. Okay. So what's our plan? Our plan is a people server sig action catch sigint set where we'll, like, set a flag and exit cleanly. Okay, let's start there. Um, so, let's open up man to sig action. Let's just keep this kind of around so that I have it for reference. So, the C API for this thing, the real libc version, has a sig number that it get, takes in, a sig info, and a context. Um, what does this guy take in? He takes in a sig action. Uh which is a structure that has a handler mask flags. Uh, empty sig set is a bunch of sig sets, which is the mask. Okay, so probably, what does like the mask field do here? Uh, struct sig action mask. SA mask specifies a mask of which signal should be blocked. I.e. added to the signal mask of the thread in which the signal handler is invoked during execution of the signal handler. Oh, I don't care. Okay, sure. Uh, okay. So let's, then we have like a handler function, which is a this. So let's just copy paste this thing. Oh, or a sig action function. Whoa, 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 whoa. So one of them takes in 
just the signal number and the other one takes in some extra shit. I probably don't care about the extra shit, so let's do this. Pub const handler is Oh, I guess this isn't how we do it. You say const function handler uh signal number takes in a scene. We specify our alignments in our calling convention and we return void. Okay. For now, let's just print out dot signal with a number solid um and now we're gonna have to like assign that to our sig action so we're gonna do something like uh this probably comes first uh maybe we'll okay, make like function register signal handler who returns nothing probably and here we call all this down here uh-huh so here we're gonna have to like make some sort of sig action uh var signal action is equal to std os signal action linux signal action no sig action here we go like this um and does he have like default values for things no so i just have to specify them i guess so we have handler is equal to um how do i actually use this because i can't like this is like some extra newton i guess i just say what like dot handler is equal to handler like this and then mask is equal to the empty mask. So std os empty six set. Flags, I guess we'll just set to zero for now. And the restore has a default parameter, so we're chilling. Okay, so then what does this like C thing do? He sets the flags. He sets the action. He sets the handler. And then we just say go. Yeah, so we just say std os sig action. Signal number is going to be sig int, which must be in like std os sig sig maybe? Sig int? Can I just like sig int? Where does this come from? <laughs> uh, int. Yeah, it's okay. So it's sig dot int like this. Maybe stood OS Linux sig int or something. And then we assign this signal action. And does this guy have the third parameter of old action? I guess it's probably what OAC stands for. I don't know. This looks like it's failable, which means that this should return an error, and we should say, I don't want to do this on here either. Okay, so I don't know. This probably didn't work. Maybe, but maybe it did. Oh, look at that. I love it when I get it right. That's kind of nice. Kind of nice indeed. Okay, so now we can just do something silly, like um, at the top here, say, like, var... <clears throat> oh, do they have atomics in this language? Zig language docs. Do they have atomics? Um, atomic. Stood atomic. Okay. Uh, that's. There's nothing in here. Value. Thin wrapper around a primitive to prevent accidental data races. Example usage. So we <clears throat> say we have like some atomic thing, and then we have like, oh, we have like our fetch. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so here, I guess I just say that my uh, like finished is equal to like a stood atomic value of a bool. And do I have to like initialize this thing? Why isn't this? Dumping to definition. Stood atomic value. Oh, this is probably the fucking new zig docs. Uh, zig language reference. I probably have to like go back in time to the 011 documentation. 
Ah, fuck. There's, like, some way to get to it. Here, maybe. Uh, learn, probably. Standard library, here we go. No, it's unstable. Latest stable. Whoa! I got an update. Latest stable is 0, 0.12. Oh, I don't want to deal with this right now, so let's just go back in time a little bit. There we go. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, okay. We're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. Atomic. Okay, so it stood atomic, atomic in this in this version. But it's the same thing. The value... Yeah, it's the same shit. Same shit. So here, this value just should be uh, atomic. And do I have to, like, initialize him in some way? In it, yeah. So we just end in it. In it, this is false. And we'll call this, like, uh, app finished. And then here we'll set uh, app finished dot store a value with an ordering. So we're going to store true. Um, I think the ordering here doesn't matter. If I remember correctly, like atomic ordering is only related to the data around the atomic, not the value itself. So I think that I can probably get away with um, stood atomic ordering relaxed. Well, they don't have relaxed. Unordered. Right, so I don't really care about like how this stuff gets relate is like is related to the stuff around it. I only care about the value itself. And we're probably gonna have to do here. Um, we don't really care about the number because we know we know that the signal number is sigint because it's the only thing we've registered. So I think we're chilling there. Uh, and then the last piece here is in our loop. Instead of uh, this like server accept, I assume that this is like blocking until we get in a connection. We can check that by just going uh, std debug. Print got connection. I'm assuming that this doesn't return until fuck off. Forgot a little bit of an argument there. So I think that yeah, it's not printing anything. And then if I go in here and I refresh, he says got connection. Yeah. So uh what we can do is we can do like a std OS P poll. And we need to like use some poll FD. So um Man to pull. I'm pretty sure this is straightforward. Last time I did this, I don't remember struggling. I think, and last time I remember, I looked at pull and select, and select it goes like pull select e pull, where pull and select are both like fucking stupid dumb dumb, and e pull like is good good, but um, for like a single file descriptor, pull I remember being the simplest. Um, so you have some pull file descriptor. You set the file descriptor argument. And where's the part where they actually call poll? Here. PFDs, NFDs. The number NFDs is like how many there are. PFDs is it looks like all they set is oh here, event. So they set, hey, this is the file descriptor. And here is the event I care about, which is uh, there's input ready to be there's something ready to be read. Okay, so we can say like a uh, var pfd is equal to probably there's like some poll poll fd is this what i want why is it lowercase weird uh so here i guess we zero it out uh so we'll do maybe well what does this guy actually look like yeah, I just want it to be all zeros. Uh, so we'll do this. Equals std mem zero init with std os poll fd. And were there other arguments to zero in it? Uh, and then I guess we have to say, uh, here's my default. I don't give a fuck. Okay. So now we have this thing. We can say our file descriptor is... Why isn't it letting me type FD here? Am I high? Pull FD. Hey, is it FD? Okay. Maybe it's like the language server just isn't happy for some reason. Uh, so we can pull this out of the server. So it was like server dot socket dot sock FD. And we want to wait for a input event.
So it's probably pull in if it follows the same convention as the yeah as signals uh-huh 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 and then we just say a uh, stood osp poll on our F list of fds so i guess it's gonna be we're gonna have like a slice of one element that only has uh stood os poll fds in it and it's going to have our poll fd our single element we're going to say there's only one one item oh we don't have to pass in like the size in this version uh because uh yeah because how do i say this uh the sli it's uh, encoded in the slice okay so here there we can try this and we say uh const num fd is equal to this num is that how it works? What's the output of people? Return. Uh the number of elements in the poll FDs whose R events fields have been set to a non-zero value. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh but probably I mean, is this gonna return zero in the case of so he's going to error out with signal interrupt is what's going to happen here. So we should actually uh, not try this because we want to catch uh, our error. I guess we don't care what the error is. And if this fails, we will... I guess it does matter what the error is because it depends on if we failed for like a good reason or bad reason. So we can say if E is equal to people error signal interrupt... Nice. Uh, we continue. Otherwise, we throw the error. Boom. Uh, okay. We can discard the number set because we can assume that if it returned, uh, maybe we'll just assert num set is equal to one. Uh, should have got something i don't know <laughs> okay and then at the top of our loop we'll just say uh while uh app finished load with stood atomic ordering unordered okay so if i've done all of this correctly what i believe should happen is when i type control c our handler should be called we should set this flag then we should jump out of this pull thing with an error that says signal interrupt and then we'll continue we'll go back to the beginning of the while loop and then we'll check the flag that we set from the signal handler and if it's true then we quit and so that means this return down here goes away uh but instead we just don't compile of course um okay so this is at line 45 it's because the socket in the server might not be set yet um, I think we can probably assume that it is, because presumably this gets set on initialization, or sorry, on listen. Yeah, so we listen. If we successfully bound to a socket, then it's set, so we're chilling. Um, he doesn't like this. He expected a this thing found a this thing. I thought that this does slice coercion. Uh, cast discards, discards const qualifier. Oh, you need to be able to write these. And since function arguments or like literals in this language are always constant, you actually can't do it inline like this. You just have to say uh, var pfds is equal to this. And then you can say pfds like that. Uh, okay, so he immediately quit, which is great. Um, because this is inverted. So I'll just put a little not sign on there. And, okay, we can refresh this several times. We've write type got connection several times, which is good. It means that, like, that pull loop is working. And I'll hit Control-C. Um, we lost the print statement. Defer. Defer. Uh, stood debug print. Clean up success. Uh, no good. But maybe because we didn't... Look at that, baby! Let's go! That's sick. Okay, okay. Um, great, that was 45 minutes to set up an HTTP server. 
Super cool. Love that. Love that. Uh, a little sad, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, let's kind of get moving on actually doing something here now. Okay, so in the inner loop, we want to, for now, just return a bunch of points. So let's, um, maybe for now we'll have some, like, functions like generate points, and we're going to return probably, um, like a runtime allocated array of points. Yeah, which means since this is like something that can fail, we can fail. And this is going to take in our allocator allocator, which means that we need a type alias for that. Uh, allocator? Is it understood mem allocator probably? And we need a point structure, so const point is equal to structure with just a uh, x. Do we want to do floats, ints? Let's do ints. Let's do ints in the range of negative to positive whatever. Um, okay, so there's got to be some sort of like random module in here. So std rand. How do we use this? We have this like random struct that I assume that this language seems like the type of language that would make me construct a RNG and then use the RNG instead of just having a function called random that ha that uses like a built-in one. It just seems like the type of thing that this language would do. And it does seem that way scrolling through here. So probably we construct this random thing uh, in it with a pointer. What is this? Pointer must be a single item pointer to a structure. Uh... Of what? How the fuck do I use this thing? Let's look at rand test. Uh, can I like e this folder and look for rand? Uh, okay, so probably these are like different random algorithms that are wrapped by like the outside one. Why does this test not exist? That's annoying. That's annoying! Uh... Fuck me. Okay, maybe it's in the docs. Maybe we'll actually type in here. Rant. Stood rant. To do, benchmark, blah blah blah, okay. Uh, random. Not useful. I mean, I, this stuff is generated from the source code, so it's not like it's going to tell me anything else. Default RG. Default. I like the word default. Takes from some seed value. How do I... I just want a fucking... I just want... <laughs> is there like an init function on here that will... Did you look at that test file? It didn't... Like, it didn't... There's nothing in it. Like, so I don't know, like, what the fuck is going on there. Um. Fuck me, man. Because, yeah, the tests are usually... Can we just go to, like, zig? Do I have this checked out? Zig. I do. Am I on version 11? I am. Okay. RNG, or rand test zig. Probably it's, like, getting compiled... It's probably just not shipping it in, like... Fucking... Nix OS. Okay. Sequential PRNG. Random Boolean. Test random Boolean. So he's getting sequential PRNG, which is not really great because I don't want his PRNG. Init zero. I want like a real RNG. Am I crazy? Zig, rand zig random number. I just want like, just give me a number, man. How do you use random numbers generator in Zig? RND gen, which is our default PRNG. Well, but like, doesn't this, if I'm seeding the RNG with the same value every time, what's the fucking point? Am I crazy? If it's procedural, like, don't I want to get it? Like, don't I want to like look at like dev u random and like pull a number out of that or something? Or like, am I crazy? 
And instead of calling it blah, 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 rnd dot random. I feel fucking high. Okay, let's just look at, can we just look at the fucking PRNG? Like, maybe I'm, like, stupid. So, default PRNG is this guy. Exoshiro. Let's go here. And he's going to seed this guy with something. And he's going to use split mix 64. Where does this come from? Uh, split mix 64 equals. Yeah, this is just fucking... There's literally, like, no randomness in here. Like, am I high? I'm high, right? Like... I guess I'm just supposed to seed it with a value that I pull out of my random number generator myself? My PRNG dot random. But, like... Am I... Am I... Like, shouldn't somebody be reading from, like, dev random or something? Like, somebody should be asking the kernel, like, hey, I need a fucking random number. Right? Okay, so there is this, like, get random in std OS. That makes way more sense to me. Like, I understand this. So, oh, nice. Oh, it's not getting You thought of it at the exact same time. Nice. So, like, does... Does anybody in OS call get random? Maybe I'm supposed to... Or sorry, anyone in the random number generator? Maybe I'm supposed to just initialize my PRNG with... Some random bytes. From you ran get random or something. That would make sense to me. Yeah, let's do that. Because I think that we can... Well... Typically, people use current time. Oh, yeah, that makes sense, too. Okay. Okay. I think I get it enough. That was confusing. I guess this is what I get for uh, using a language that's, like, in flight. Things like this are... I'm just supposed to get it. Which is fair. Which is fair. Um, okay. So... Stood random rand default PRG. I guess fast unbiased random number generators. Let's do that. Okay, cool. And so we will say RNG dot in it with some U64. So let's say a stood OS get random and we will construct a U64. I don't really want to use time. I don't really want to use time. I like the idea of using get random better. <laughs> it's like conceptually, it makes more sense. <coughs> uh, okay. So we are going to take a U64. Uh, so we're going to call this seed. The U64 is going to be undefined. And then we're going to say stood mem. Uh, there's something like as bytes, I think. To take our seed and return him as an array. And then we can just enter in it this with the C. Uh, which is going to return our thing. So uh, const or var rng is equal to this. And then I'm supposed to call rng.random to give me uh, the, the rng interface, probably. What's in here? So he stores a pointer probably to his parent. And then calls this like fill function. Got it. Yeah, fun yeah, yeah, cool. okay. Uh, so this is going to be our RNG, and this is going to be our RNG interface, I guess, is what I can think of this as. And so we have, like, RNG interface. And uh, can we just make, like, a int range at most, I guess? Evenly distribute random integer between at least and at most. This is such a weird function name. 
why do like at most it also has an at least okay whatever so let's distribute these points in the range of like zero to 100 uh <clears throat> and we have to be a little bit careful here if we were to do if we just do this i think that you still end up with some bias even though you're building up your random numbers out of uniform randomness no oh, no i think that maybe that's fine I can't remember if you end up with some sort of clumping as a result of that. I don't see why I would, but, you know, sometimes it just happens. Um, let's say we have some, like, a number of points that we want to pull in. And we'll do something like std array list of points. Our ret is equal to this. We initialize it with our allocator. And then we say uh, for zero to num points, we don't care about the value we're going to if you do a similar thing in polar coordinates you do get non-random distribution because then your distance from the center is what's randomized and the angle is randomized so you end up with uh, you end up with more things toward the center or something no i can't i can't picture it I just know that, like, there's, like, something about, like, my intuition on this is wrong. That's all I know. Because every time I think about it, I'm like, uh, maybe not. <laughs> okay. So, let's make a point. Uh, X is going to be X, and Y is going to be Y. This guy needs a little dot here, and then we return red. Uh, okay. Okay. Cool, so now we are going to generate points. In discrete coordinates, it's fine. Yeah, okay, we'll see. I mean, it'll be, it comes, it, if I remember correctly, the f failure case becomes, like, pretty obvious um, when you look at it. So, I guess we'll just graph them out and see what happens. Um... Okay, so we have some points, and I guess let's maybe return these as a uh, JSON. Application JSON, which means I think our standard library has some JSON in it. And uh, begin object, set the field, write the field. Okay, so probably there's something like, hey, I want to make an array. Probably... And so I probably say something like, I'm going to begin an array. And then you probably inject the elements. And then end the, end the array. It's probably what it looks like. So we have some output. Okay. And we have some write stream that we can't. We, so this thing acts on some sort of output stream. So probably we can actually write the JSON directly into the response body. That's kind of neat. Um, so this is write stream. Where does this come from? Function write stream. Is this... What else is in here? Stringify write stream. Yeah, write stream is probably what we want. That looks pretty good. Yeah, let's do it. So this is in std json stringify. And do we, do we reuse this from here? std json write stream. He does just like alias it. Okay, we're cool. We are chilling. Okay. So if we want to JSONify this, our points, we just say, um, maybe we should JSONify them immediately. Eh, maybe not. So maybe we will say, uh, function write points to JSON. Write points to JSON. And we're going to take in some writer. And we're going to take in our points which is going to be a slice of points. And there's probably going to be some sort of error case here. Um, and so we're going to construct our little JSON writer. So we're going to say function JSON writer is equal to std JSON write stream. And I assume that we just pass in our output stream. Yep, writer and our options. So I'll just leave default options for now because I don't know what they mean. This probably has to be a variable, and is this guy failable? Nope. Looks like we are just chilling. So, begin array. 
and then presumably we have to end our array. Yep. And then we have to, uh, for each object, four points. We have each, for each point, we have to put that in the JSON stream. So probably we have to like begin object and end object. And then just like set the add object, object field. Yeah. So here we're going to set X and then we're going to say object value probably. No. Uh, how do I get the value in here? We saw that in the test somewhere. Right stream, it was begin object, object field right. Just right. Okay. Sure. So, we can just write any type. So, let's just take in point.x, I guess, and see what fucking happens. Right? Like, is this right? Maybe. We'll see. Probably all of these guys are available. Probably, and then here, we're just gonna say, hey, could we uh, write points JSON with response, hello, response writer? Yes. Write points JSON with our writer and our points. Maybe. Maybe he doesn't like that because consider using try catch on points makes sense. We might fail to generate our points. Uh, error is ignored on get random. Uh huh. Int range at most expected three arguments. Really? Oh, the type. Okay. Uh-huh, we're chilling, and I hit refresh. Not bad! Look! Look at that! We did it! Those are random numbers. Okay, so we're at an hour and two minutes. <laughs> Woo! Okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, okay. So, maybe we do... Ooh! Memory leak! And this is why it's good that we put that time into the signal handler stuff. Because uh, our points here, we forgot, to, we forgot to free them. Not that that really matters. Because it's only a one-time initialization thing, but it's nice that it's there. There we go. Yep. Chillin'. Chillin'! Um, okay. So now I guess we have some sort of, like, HTML <laughs> that we're going to have to write. Uh, what is it? You put like exclamation mark dark type HTML, maybe lowercase. I guess we can just uh, <laughs> go to like any website and see what they do. Okay, and then you have like some head and some body. Uh, and we are going to retrieve the data from our server. Um and do something with it so let's just do like a little script source equals test js i don't know i can't remember if i have to like close this or not but whatever and then we go to test js and we say on load do some stuff uh-huh do i need a semicolon here maybe i don't fucking know um, and then on here, can we just do, like, a fetch, uh, which has some input? Who needs HTML tags? <laughs> H <laughs> Me, what the fuck is an HTML tag? <laughs> uh, okay, so here we have, okay, I'm just gonna fucking MDM fetch. Oh, uh, give me... I just want to, like, get some stuff, please. Give me an example. Perfect. Yeah, this is exactly what I want. Uh, oops. Okay. Uh, set shift width equal four. Expand tab, tab stop equal four. There you go. This needs to be an async function, I guess. I hope I can assign that like this. Nice. And I'll just go from, uh... Localhost 999, 
and console log uh, points. So here I should be able to just uh, Firefox test HTML and we should be able to see in our console. Uh, fuck. <laughs> Does that, I guess that means I have to serve the data from the thing. Oh, I forgot the HTML wrapper. Oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> You are right. Uh, okay, so I guess unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, I probably have to actually serve this stuff from my fucking server because it's getting mad that I can't do cross-domain blah, blah, blah. Ugh. I get it, I get it, but I'm surprised to some extent... But it is what it is. So probably in here, we have to like uh, look for where they are trying to get. Where like we're like where the fuck are we going? You know, like they have some path that they've asked for. Um, version status reason allocator headers requests probably in their quest. And probably, we have. Target. It's got to just be in the target, right? So we can do something like uh, std debug print uh, request target is going to be request to response request target. And here, I guess we actually have to write the string and maybe I even add a new line. We're going to get crazy with it, you know? We want to get wild. Uh, okay. Sick. So request target slash, and we say, like, throw some shit in there. Solid. Okay. So here we're going to want to, like, probably this is where we split out function handle HTTP request. And we take in a response object. Uh, which is stood HTTP response, probably maybe server response. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh std http response is this the field is this valid or is it std http server response like this yeah there we go um okay so now we're going to maybe dispatch to some things so we're going to look at the response request uh target and i guess we're just going to like if ladder this I think in Zig you can't do like switch statements on a string because it's like kind of more C like. So you do just have to if ladder. I guess that's fine. Uh, so std mem std mem equal slice equal. I think it's equal. Uh, so if this target string is uh, going to be. I guess we'll just start at the root. So the root thing will be our HTML. Uh-huh. Does this return true or false? Yeah, it does. Um, then we return, we like copy in test HTML. Um, I don't like uh, this too much. Here's what I'm gonna do. Because this becomes like, it's like a lot of noise per if statement to get out like what we're actually doing. So I, but you can kind of like squash that down a little bit. If you say like, I'm going to have some handler, right? Cons handler is equal to a struct. And it's like the URI is going to be a const u8. And the function is just going to be something like this. Maybe this is even, uh, yeah, function pointer, I think it does have to be, it has to be runtime function pointer. I think function prototype may not have inferred error set. Fine. And, uh, handler error. Uh, const handler error is equal to error. And we'll fucking figure it out later. <laughs> Um, so now you can get a little crazy 
and you can say uh, const handlers is equal to some array of handlers. And we can make our first one. Uh... <laughs> Dude, my brain just shut off so fucking hard. Uh, just like a little soft lock. I could hear the like, like the gears like fucking grinding in my head. Uh, okay, so we have like some URI and uh, some function, which is going to be uh, send root file. Yeah, I don't know. Send index HTML. Uh, yeah, we could even get a little crazy here, and we could allow for data. Uh, you could even get, like, you get crazy and, like, add a void point here, but I'm not going to do that. Function send index HTML. And he's going to take in nothing, and he's going to turn in a handle, error, handler, error, or void. Uh, and I guess these guys all have to take in the writer. Handle HTTP request. So he is going to take in, I guess, uh, a writer. Which means that these guys are going to take in the type of writer. And that means that here we're going to take in a uh, writer, which is an any type. And here... Here we then will just say, like, uh, std fs current working directory uh, open file and this is just me test html I guess uh huh probably with no open flags I give a fuck and then we just want to do like writer dot write all can I just like like up, like directly feed a reader into a writer in this language reader um like I could read in chunks I just don't know if I like it would be nice if I could just like write from a reader you know search for pump hell yeah love it uh pump oh it's only on linear FIFO Pump data from a reader into a writer stops when... So what? why is this related to linear FIFO? Uh, probably because I need to set, like, my FIFO length and stuff. Sure. Uh. Ooh. Okay, so how do I, like, make this thing? Where's my function, fucking init function? Uh... So I s probably just, I guess I just, oh, I just call this function with type and buffer type. Dynamic is fine. Uh, maybe static is what I want. Static 4096. Sure. Um, okay. So I construct this thing. And then when I pump, it said uh, something needs to be set. Buffer size must be set before calling. A buffer length of zero is invalid. So how do I set my buffer size? How do I set my buffer size? I guess I'll just fucking look at the source. Um. So he returns some structure, and I have a buffer, blah, blah, blah. So pump... Self buff length is greater than okay, fine. Yeah, that's fine. So that's like if you're using dynamic allocation, you need to like spit out something. You need to like initialize it with something, but I don't like give a fuck. Give a fuck. Okay, okay, I think I get it. I think I get it. Stud FIFO. Linear FIFO with U8s, and I have to use a static. Or I think I say this is some union where I'm saying I want to use the static type with 4096 Ch copy in 4k chunks and 
var fifo is equal to this. And then we say we have this like read writer, and then we just want to, or we have the reader, and then we have a writer, so we can just do fifo pump. It, okay, I don't know if this is just me, or is the word pump here, like in my head, it sounds like uh, inappropriate. I guess is the word. I don't know what it is, but just typing pump here like feels icky to me. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because my head's in the fucking gutter. Uh, but it's just, you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so the HTML is this thing. We pump in the HTML reader and we write out to our writer. Uh, and this is failable. Uh, right, and then down here we can say for handlers, if, then we can put this if statement in like a nice little, if the target is equal to the URI. And if it is, then we just call the function. Capture shadows declaration of handler. Handler doesn't exist anymore. Am I crazy? What's it complaining about? Let's find out. Shadow's declaration of handler? There is no declaration of handler. Am I fucking high? Oh. <laughs> fine. Fine. I'll allow it. You're right. It is shadowing. Okay. So now if I go back here and I go to the root, uh, nothing happens because we didn't call the function. <laughs> So here to be like handle HTTP request and uh, we should just pass in the response here. Probably. Let's do this. Uh-huh. And then all of this stuff, I guess, probably kind of has to go into handle HTTP request. So kind of it's like send index HTML takes in a writer. Maybe you just take in like the response in general. Oh fuck, did I lose? Did I delete this stuff? I can't remember. Uh we'll just we'll leave it there. Okay. So this guy, our handler, is going to take in a stood HTTP server response. Which means that our writer has to come from a response dot writer like this, okay. And then all of this like header stuff. Whoop. I guess we will set this like connection close stuff kind of up here, uh, because you know it's going to be the same for all handlers. Here we say we are. Uh, text HTML, and then we pump this shit into the writer. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then down here, when we call a function, we have to pass in the response, and handle HTTP request doesn't actually need to take in the writer, because it's part of the response. And then here, we just say handle HTTP request response, and we're chilling. Could you write directly to the response writer? I think I am, am I not? Is that not what this is? Response writer? Oh, you mean like just call like the response directly because the response writer is just going to wrap the same functions with the same names on response? I think that's what you mean. In which case, maybe. Uh, this doesn't need like that type of shit anymore. It's just stood HTTP server response. Okay. Uh, whoa. Oh, fuck me. Okay. So we need to get the error unions and apply them to our thing. Okay. So, a few things to handle. This needs to be tried. This needs to be tried. This error set needs to have, like, the writer, the, like, error type from this guy. Um, so write all, I guess, 
is going to have this write error, which is HTTP server write error. Okay. So handler error is equal to std HTTP server write response write error. Okay. And then here he's saying that open file has more errors that come from it. So we need to say, hey, there are, you could maybe be a std fs file open error as well. That's another thing that you could be. Uh, type must be const or compile time. So FIFO here, I forgot to instantiate the linear FIFO. Uh, missing fields allocator. But I thought that I don't need the allocator if I'm using a static buffer type. If buffer type is equal to dynamic allocator. Oh, maybe I have to specify uh, allocator's void anyways. Like this. FIFO has in it. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, okay, we are close. Now we just need the header append error type. Oh, gross, man. So this is just like unknown. Great, love that. So is this really... We'll just take allocator error and just hope for the fucking best. Is this really what I'm supposed to do? I'm not really happy with this, I don't think. I would like to just be able to say, take any error, but I guess maybe error sets are like sized types, so it needs to know. But it'd be cool if I could just say like, could you take any error that's backed by this value? I would prefer that, because this is bullshit. <laughs> you know? Any error is a thing. So could I here, instead of, could I write um like any error here? Oh yeah, nice. I like that way better. <laughs> okay, so if I go to the root, I expected to get back something. Um, yeah, explicit error sets are preferred when possible. I like get it, but uh, I don't care. <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, so here we should uh, return early, and if we get to here, we can say as uh, return error uh, no handler for now. Of course, that's going to crash us, but I just want to see if we're hitting that. We are hitting no handler, which is surprising. Maybe we'll log an error here. Uh, we can say that the uh, target string was not matched by any handler. And then here we will just pass in response, request, target. And see what we're doing wrong. I guess we should put this in quotes in case it like gets fucked up. Like if there's like spaces and stuff, I just wanna like be able to see that. Uh, and we will refresh here and he says, uh, favoc on not matched, sure. Test.js not matched, sure. This is matched. So why the fuck is this not running? Did I forget to do some sort of, like... Oh, I'm supposed to, uh... Response finish. Uh, so down here, we'll just, uh... Defer... Catch, uh... Catch something. Stood, log, error... Uh, response finish failed and here we need to take in maybe the error value and write it down here yeah 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 okay let's try that uh got connection so fish finish did not was not happy for some reason so he because in 635 in server zig He's saying, hey, we haven't, we're not in the responded state. How do we get into the responded state? What the fuck? Finish the body of request. This notifies the server that you have no more data to send. Uh, I guess I had, okay, so I guess they're kind of indicating that I should do this here. Uh, 
Okay. And there's nothing. He's not complaining about anything. So why am I not seeing the? Uh, why am I not seeing like anything come in here? Oh, here he is getting something. Response is empty. Oh, okay. So I'm opening test HTML. He's definitely got some stuff in there. Am I stupid? Is this pump not doing what I think it should be doing? Hmm. I actually don't know how to debug this. So I am getting... My response headers do have... Text HTML, connection close. But this is not coming in, so why? This must be succeeding, because we're not like getting an error coming out of this. Um let's just kind of like see what's going on here. So here we do say we opened the thing. Why is the body of this guy just empty? Oh. Oh, I'm an idiot. We're just it's just working fine and there's just nothing in there. Right? I have to write like Hello world. Okay. Yeah, it's actually just fine. Okay. Uh, we're gonna say send index JavaScript, and probably we are going to break out a function that's like send file, and we'll just take in the response as a std HTTP server response, right? And we are going to return a handle error void, and we're gonna do all of this stuff except just uh replace test HTML with a path. Uh-huh, and we probably also want to change the content type. Uh-huh, so here we'll just say this guy is the content type, and this is the path, and we are chilling. So send index HTML now just turns into a send file response, test HTML, and a text HTML. All of this goes away. And send index JavaScript turns into send test JS app, uh, application JavaScript. Uh, I don't actually know JavaScript content type. Uh, 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 JavaScript JavaScript content type. Like, why did that just not give me what I wanted? Mom types dot JS JavaScript text JavaScript. Got it. Okay, so now we can just kind of slap another handler in. I kind of want these to be one line, I think. Send index JavaScript, okay. And then here we'll also throw a little, they type in test HTML, we'll give it to them. Uh-huh, yep. So now, if I run my server again, oopsies, muscle memory tried to run some Rust. No worries, it happens. Um, so what happened here? Um, we read this, test.js. Maybe we need to refresh. So our thing should say run this script. I don't know why... Oh, we did get test.js. Oh, I see, and then we just can't fetch localhost uh, because we can't get the... We, we can't specify the name in there. Okay, 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 we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. So here we'll just say uh, points. And then we'll look for points. And if we do, we'll say send points. And here's where it's getting a little hairy. Now the points need to be, like, passed in to us, I guess. 
which kind of means that here we have like uh like a pointer we need to take in like user data which is going to be uh any opaque does is any opaque do we put a star here i think we do i think that that's like the equivalent of void star yeah okay um which means that all of these guys have to take in a user i guess this is any opaque Um, is that how I want to do this? I guess I should know what the type is. It doesn't have to be like a void pointer because we don't, uh, oh no, wait, I do want that. I do want it. I do, I do, I do, I do. Cause then we can do this. Cause then we can like, kind of like scope. I can't spell opaque. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, cause then I can say data is going to be a any opaque here yeah and then here i can just say this is equal to uh i guess this needs to be an optional and it's going to be null by default so all of these guys have to have a little bit of these question marks in front of them yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. and then here we will pass in handler dot data yeah. yeah 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 does that build close uh, so our handle HTTP request is going to take in our points, which is a slice of points, right? And then we can say, hey, we have a function that's going to be handled at the points API, and it's going to be send points, and we're going to pass in our points. Yeah. 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 I think that makes sense. Then we have, like, function... Uh, send points, take some risk, just, just copy the fucking, send points, take some response, and some points, and then we pointer cast the points, so, okay, uh, const points, we'll say points, uh, opaque, we'll call it, and then we have points is equal to pointer cast points opaque. And this gets turned into a uh, const u8. No, point. Probably this is not how pointer cast works. We're going to have to see what the compiler yells at us about that. Um, and then all of this stuff from down here just goes here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Why not? So now we need to pass in our points here. Uh, send index HTML. He's not happy. What doesn't he like? Oh, yeah, I forgot to put the question mark here. My bad. My bad. Um, expected this, found that. So can I... Illegal cast pointer to slice. Can I just take in like an any opaque without a star? What the fuck is zig any opaque? Used for type rated pointers. So this is like void. So how do I go from like a slice to any opaque zig? Uh, cast it to a many item pointer first. Oh, and I need to, do I need to take in the count as well? Really? That's shitty. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. Can I, is there like a, like, because that means that this guy now needs to be a pointer to a structure that, oh, that sucks. So I just need to like take the item count in as a second parameter. Ugh. Lame. Since, like, yeah, slice types don't have a well-defined layout. I guess that makes sense. Is there, like... Ugh, fine. 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 Uh, so this is gonna be a struct with a <laughs> pointer, which is a... Uh, I guess we'll call this, just for now, we'll call it a point slice. 
Uh, and this is going to take in a point. And this is going to be a length. I'm starting to not like this anymore, by the way. This is getting out of hand. This is fucking stupid now. Just for the record. <laughs> uh, so this will be point def, points definition. This is, yeah, this is fucking stupid. This is, bleh. But we're too deep now. You know? And then we can now say const points is equal to our uh, points definition pointer from zero to points definition dot length. I think that should do it. Um, okay, because data here needs to be a like points slice where we have pointer is equal to points pointer and length is equal to points length yeah this is awful awful i regret this but i don't really know if i like like if i have anything i like better to be honest uh this guy needs to say cons here or else it won't compile cast increases point alignment i'm gonna fucking lose my mind <laughs> Uh, sure, but I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. So this, we just have to fucking align cast first. Uh-huh, uh, found, expected any opaque, found this thing. So I guess our any op uh, what is it complaining about? Cast discards qu cons qualifier? Oh! <gasps> I'm gonna lose my mind. Okay, let's try that. We'll const cast it away. And then uh, I forgot to look at uh, this thing has to be fucking defined. Uh huh. Point slice does not support field access here as well. Thank fucking God, dude. Okay. Okay, so we got farther. It compiled at the very least. Refresh. Didn't respond to points. Why? Uh, I don't know why this says thing here, because we clearly got the data. So our console should log the data. Uncaught exception in promise from on load at what is it? Where is it complaining? So this is fine. Step. Oh wait, refresh. Step. So here we should have the response. Yep. So we have, oh, but the JS this didn't come out, or response undefined, undefined. Refresh. Next. Response is chilling. Why can't I response JSON? Is it because the thing came back with, he says he's JSON. He knows he's JSON. Can I, like, can I pause an exception? It's saying, like, am I mental? Refresh. Yeah, it's not pausing on exception. So why is this? The operation was aborted. Uncaught in promise. It is still complaining here. Like, this guy is saying blocked. Oh, what does blocked mean? Maybe I forgot to write finish. That might do it. Yeah, there we go. I forgot to write finish. So it got the full response, but then the browser was like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Which is pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable. Okay, so our console now has an array of points. And so now I guess we just need to fucking quickly drop that into a canvas. Okay. 
Okay. I am going to lose it, but it's okay. It's okay. We're all okay. Everyone's okay. Okay. So let's do a 100 by 100 image so that the size of the canvas lines up with the numbers that we could get, which were 0 to 100. Uh, let's do a little hello world where all we do is we get the canvas. So const canvas is a window, no, document, get element by ID, canvas. Yup. And then uh, it's a canvas. I think now here's where we get a little tricky. We're trying to get the language server to tell us that what the fields are by saying hey look we have like a little doc string and so now you know that this is an html canvas and now you can tell me if that it's like get context here i say 2d i think and then here we say context uh, let ctx is equal to this and then we can say t context dot fill can i just like fucking fill the whole thing with like red or something like i just want like an example and then here, if I refresh, hopefully everything comes together. No, because I'm not running the server. Uh, he doesn't like canvas is null. Why? 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 Oh, is this because it's canvas is null? But I have, do I not have a canvas element? Did I not save? ID can cavness. The classic, the classic typo, typo. Hoping 0.12 HTTP is a little easier to use. 0.11 was its debut. I mean, I'm not really that... The It's it's fine. I'm not really, like, that upset with the HTML API. I'm more upset with, like, my own handler definition. I wasn't really happy with that. It's not really their fault. I don't think they did anything wrong. Get context is not a function. How do I use this thing? How do I use this thing? Uh, I don't want a guide. I just want, like, a fucking example. Uh, here, get context. Did I, did I not spell get context right? Get context. Canvas. Const canvas equal document get on by ID canvas. Yep. Const context is, oh, can, canvas. Canvas. No, wait, that's right. Canvas, get context. And I pass in 2D. Yeah, so what's the fucking bitch about? What doesn't it like? Canvas get context is not a function. Am I mental? Refresh. Where's my console? How do I get a console in this context? This button? The opening HTML, I think, is... The opening HTML tag, I think, is still Kavnest. God damn it! <laughs> Thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, you guys are the best. Did I spell it right on the other side? Canvas. Yeah, okay. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, play. Refresh. Okay. Uh, so now, fill red is not a valid value, so where is that example? Let's just do a fill rect here. We'll do their example. So here, instead of filling red, we'll say fill rect, and here I write red. And 100, It's we want 100, maybe 90 by 90. Let's try that. Refresh. There we go. Okay. Solid. So we got a box. We are drawing a box. And now all we have to do is go point by point for let cons point of in. Who knows? I know sometimes it's of, sometimes it's not. Let's just try points and see what happens. I think of, uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll fucking see. Let's just log the point and see what fucking happens. One of them uses, like, some sort of, like, JavaScript iterator API, and one of them just, like, fucking walks the object or something. I can never fucking remember. Fuck this language. <laughs> uh, let's leave the server running. So let's see this. Next shell or on this side. Um, uh, let him get up and running. Zig build. Now it's running, and then we can just kind of refresh as we go. Okay. 
So it does look like using of there was the right syntax. Out of curiosity, let's see what happens if I write in here. I think it gives me indexes. Yeah, it just gives me like indexes. So of points. Because arrays support that. Uh, and then we just say we go to the point. So we're going to say like circle, uh, draw, circle, circle. HTML canvas, circle. <laughs> Can I not fill it? Um, we can create a full circle. Am I high? Oh, here. They. I see. They. I just had to go a little bit longer. So they're saying, hey. Oh, interesting. So you draw an arc where you define something. Here is probably like the distance of the arc you travel, so the full circle. Uh, here is probably x and y. Look, it's probably like radius something. So it's like a ctx dot arc number x y radius start angle. Ah, I see end angle. Yeah, yeah. So here we're gonna go at the position. Um, and then the radius we're gonna set to like. 1? No, 0 0.5? I don't know if it's going to like that. Maybe we'll do a radius a little bigger. We'll do like a radius of like 3. Just to get us moving. Um, then we start at 0 and we end at... Uh, is math? Where does math come from here? <laughs> you can tell I'm like fucking raw on my JavaScript. Because I can't remember simple things like this. It just looks like it's just just there. All right, and then I stay. I have to start the path, and then I probably fill this thing. Yep. Uh huh. And do I have to do the stroke? Maybe I don't. If I only care about the fill, let's just see what happens. Okay. Um, that's interesting. I don't know why they're all getting cropped because I said math pi not. 2 pi, of course. It's dumb, stupid of me. And, uh... Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, um... Probably I want my canvas size to be a little bigger. Right? I want this thing to, like, maybe be, like, a uh, 110 by 110. And then I'll offset all of my points by 5. To give us, like, a little bit of a border area, you know? Uh, okay. And it would be nice to maybe have on refresh regenerate the points. I think I've decided that's what I want. Uh, so here, instead of using the points that we pass in, we're just going to generate the points instead. Which means that all of that work for that opaque pointer is completely useless, but, you know, that's okay. Uh, we do need an allocator, though. <laughs> We're just going to uh, take a shortcut. Because I don't want to deal with the piping right now. Um, and then we're going to say, this is a try. This is defer points dot D in it. And this is going to use points items. Okay. Uh, then he's going to be mad, but it's okay. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, looks like I spelled points wrong somewhere. P-O-I-N-T-S, but I didn't make it. Points. Probably has to be var. You can make the, fire, the thing higher res and a scale factor. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, for sure. Um... Seems like a C allocator is only... Fuck me. <laughs> okay. Fine. Fine. We won't take our shortcut then. Fine. We'll pass on the fucking allocator. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? We'll pass in our goddamn allocator. Fine. Oh, unless it's in the response already. It might be. Response.allocator. Hell yeah. Another shortcut. Love taking shortcuts. Because... Okay. So... Oh, there we go. 
Okay. Not bad. Not bad. It's interesting that I'm seeing duplicates. Right, how come there I saw the same thing twice? Because this should be initializing the random number generator from dev random. That's weird. Whatever the fuck happened there, that's fucking weird. Um, but you know. Okay. Maybe it's because I'm refreshing before it renders. That's probably it. Uh, okay, yeah. That's a... I think it's a good natural starting point for now. So I could, was kind of hoping that we would finish this around like half an hour earlier so that I felt like I would have enough time to uh, actually implement a clustering algorithm. But, you know, as it goes. So this is good enough progress. Uh, what do we do today? We set up a little HTML server in, or HTTP server in Zig. It serves some shit. You can control C it so that it exits cleanly. Um... And then we added this little shitty JavaScript HTML canvas that lets us like visualize the points. Um, so probably what's up next is we will need to like actually add like a little like button here that lets us um, iterate through some algorithm that we're implementing. And as we iterate, we'll get new data um, that's like kind of grouped by cluster. And then we can color them according to their cluster. And then we'll get to experiment with the different different types of algorithms. Um, what clustering algorithms are you going to use? I wanted to look at, um, hierarchical clustering, which, cause it seemed like the simplest one that kind of looked like it was going to fit my needs, uh, where this guy's like, kind of, you just kind of like grab the two closest elements to each other and grab, stick them in a cluster. And then you just kind of iteratively do that for a while. I wanted to look at K-means clustering and DB scan as well. Um, K-means clustering seems like it'll be a good fit if I know how many clusters I know I have like up front. And then DB scan seems like it'll be a good fit if I kind of know like the approximate density of my clusters. Where hierarchical clustering, I think I would use if I don't know, um, if I don't know either of those things, and I just want to like say, okay, like I know like maybe I only care about the top ninety percent of my points or something. Um, so, anyways, we're gonna look at those. We'll save that for next stream. I think uh, we'll be in a good spot to start off there and just get move it, hit the ground running tomorrow. So, I think we'll call it there. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked what you saw, we're streaming most days at around 2 o'clock Pacific time for around 2 hours. So, it's 4 o'clock now. So, 2 hours ago would be when we start. Um, there is, if you're new here, there's a YouTube link in the Twitch description where all VODs go up, as well as a GitHub link in the Twitch description where all code eventually comes. I shouldn't say all code. The vast majority of code eventually ends up there. Um, if you don't see the links in the Twitch description, it's just the same names on both platforms. Because uh, I don't know why some people just don't see them. Um, if you're on YouTube, there's a Twitch link in the YouTube description where you can swing by and say hi if you happen to be online between the hours of 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock Pacific time. Um, what else? If I, I guess I should have to like, plug what's on there. So previous projects kind of like include like operating systems, neural networks, uh, diff tool, virtual file systems, kind of like low level, whatever the fuck I feel like is kind of where it trends to. Um, yeah, so... Thanks, guys, and hopefully I'll catch you on the next one. If not, uh, see you never. Bye!